So, uh, Merce uh, is a lawyer and politician. She served as president of the Port of Barcelona from 2018 until 2021. So she had to leave the pandemic <laughs> as president of the board. And uh, well, currently she serves as chief um, executive officer of Barcelona Global. And she will be introducing our economic uh, block for today. And the first question that we want to ask her is what key factors can foster economic development in the Mediterranean region and how can they be effectively leveraged? So thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. And as you said, I know uh, the, school, uh, the school very much and I'm very proud to meet you here in this privileged space. About the question, and I hope that your questions would be easier than the, the, the ones that you have <laughs> done before, because there were very high level questions, so I would try to answer everything. But what, what I would like to say, uh, first of all, is that we are living in a, a VUCA scenario. What, what means VUCA scenario? It means that in our world, in our society, our economy is uh, now volatile, is uncertain, is complex, and is also ambiguous. So we have to manage a port, we have to manage a company, in this situation, and it's very difficult. So, um, I think that we have to uh, identify what's certain, what we can control, and what's not under our control. So, what is certain is that we all together share a privileged uh, Mediterranean area. So, one of the certain points that I would like to highlight is that geographic location and connectivity are an opportunity for the economy. Because we are in a triangle with Africa, Asia and Europe. And this is a very good, good opportunity to focus and to put all uh, the efforts uh, to foster the economy in this triangle. What is going to happen in this triangle? A lot of things. For example, trade and investment. Because if we are open, uh, we know that the trade increases, the investment increases, and we can share trade and we can share investment. And this is where the governments, where the ports have to put the focus. Also, this reinforces the GPD of our countries and our cities. And also, uh, we have to be focused in the talent. And I want to talk about the talent, because the talent is the key issue that would be, uh, mm, would be a strategic for the future development of the cities and for the future development of the uh, countries. So, trade, open trade, open investment, innovation and technology and talent. And I would like to talk about innovation and technology. Uh, I have some six minutes, five minutes, and would like to, tell, to talk about Mm, the, the, the importance of embracing innovation and technology for driving the economic developing of the ports and the companies in Mediterranean area. And I would like to put uh, an example, uh, and maybe you say, this is not innovation and technology. Yes, I have to say that it's I uh, innovation and technology. I would uh, mm, like to put the example uh, of America's Cup. The America's Cup is a competition, is um, a sale competition, uh, very famous around the world, 
and Barcelona is going to uh, allocate this competition next week in 2024. But it's about a sportive competition? No, it's not about a sportive competition. It's about innovation on uh, the boats, it's about hydrogen in the boats, it's about technology, it's about data analysts, it's about sustainability, it's about explaining to the world that Mediterranean ports can be promoted through a sportive event, but we are not talking only about a sportive competition. We are talking about innovation, about technology, about data analysts. So in this BUCA scenario that is volatile, uncertain, eh, ambiguous, eh, well, we have to work and we have to identify what are the opportunities. And if the opportunity of America's Cup is good to focus on hydrogen on boats or uh, LNG, for example, or uh, on uh, accelerate sustainability and uh, reduce uh, CO2 emissions, we are doing what is our job. job. Be competitiveness and uh, be aware uh, about uh, what is the uh, um, a scenario, economic scenario, and economic, uh, uh, um, a global economic scenario. So this is my uh, recommendations for the first question that you, uh, you do me. Thank you, thank you, Marcel. So we can continue with the next question. Hope it is easier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what role should cities with ports, or ports with cities, like Barcelona, Marseille, Rome, Tunis, Aqaba, Damietta, and Beirut play in shaping a new society and fostering economic, economic development in the Mediterranean region? Yes, I like very much this question because um, I've been working a lot with uh, the city science and I like very much uh, a study what is the development of the cities, and especially the cities with a port, with a port inside or with uh, a, a port infrastructure. And um, I, I, I can explain what is the situation of Barcelona. For example, Barcelona is a very open city and global city. And it means that Barcelona has a very important port, um, one of the most important in uh, Spanish in, in, in Spain, but also um, Barcelona has also a connected airport. So the new cities, the cities of the future, would be the cities that are connected, but also that are sustainable. So we have to uh, be very... Uh, um, we have to be very focused and put attention on be well connected with connections to through all the Mediterranean area, through Europe, through Asia, through um, America, but also we need to uh, give uh, um, some uh, figures to our citizens to explain that the infrastructure of the port is not a polluted infrastructure. So I say that the cities that are going to be the most interesting cities in the future would be the ones that are connected and also are not polluted. Um, Barcelona, uh, thanks to the port, thanks to the airport, thanks to the lifestyle that it's not so different lifestyle than, than other cities that have port, is the second, Euro, uh, second city in Europe that uh, attract more uh, startup founders. So we have an ecosystem, uh, an entrepreneurship ecosystem that is really very, very important. 
companies like eDreams, Globo, um, 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 Factorial, uh, um, more um, Travel Perk, and other ones are uh, born in Barcelona. And it means that uh, there is an ecosystem that facilitates that this happen in a city that it's open because it's open thanks to the port, because it's open thanks to the airport infrastructure. Also, in Barcelona now, uh, we are very well positioned to attract um, a technological hubs. And we are uh, talking about uh, Bayer, Nestlé, AstraZeneca, for example. AstraZeneca was in the uh, United Kingdom and uh, after Brexit, a part of AstraZeneca is coming to Barcelona, so they see an opportunity uh, to uh, put this headquarter, not is the headquarter, uh, the, the hub of technology, the technology hub in Barcelona. And this is important because it means that they fi find in Barcelona this connectivity, but also they know that Barcelona is, has been elected as a net zero city in 2030, in 2030. So it means that Barcelona is going to be in uh, the, uh, I mean, it's going to be in uh, the championship of the cities that are going to be net zero emissions, it means neutral in emissions, in 2030. And at the same time, Barcelona is going to be a very well connected city. So, and companies want this. So, we are talking uh, um, about be open, focused on the trade, focus on the exchange, be open to the talent, and also be green. And it's very important nowadays to be green. So, I say that the role of the cities with ports is a very relevant role nowadays in not only in Europe, uh, in all the Mediterranean area. And if the cities with ports can be um, together in alliance like this a school, I think that there will be a lot of opportunities also for Mediterranean talent. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel. <laughs> we will begin with uh, questions from the audience. So the first one. Hi. Hi. Uh, Good afternoon. My name is Massa. I'm one of the students from Scola Europea, Port of Rome. My question is that uh, how would you see the future of ports regarding the artificial intelligence AI? Thank you. Wow, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, um, in 2018, when I was uh, president uh, of the Port of Barcelona, we uh, launch uh, the uh, strategy of uh, or the initiative of smart ports, smart ports, peers of the future, and Eduard knows very well a smart ports initiative, and uh, it it was promoted for the port of Barcelona, joining joined by uh, other ports of Europe, and um, the aim was uh, use the data analysis uh, to, uh, to manage the port and to uh, give the service to our customers uh, more efficiently. And it was a very interesting initiative, but the, the artificial intelligence uh, goes far than smart ports. And we have to ask what far we can go, and it's not easy. I, I'm not an expert, so I, I, I've been thinking what 
can be useful for us when we manage a port on, or we manage a terminal. Maybe uh, um, the, the, intelligence, the artificial intelligence um, and, uh, about, and, and using the data, uh, the computers will learn to prevent climate scenarios better than now. Maybe uh, there will be possible to reorganize the terminal uh, stocks better than uh, now. Maybe uh, we um, will be uh, able to anticipate uh, scenarios that now we are not able. But I, can, I would like to put an example. When I was beginning as a president of the port, there was a cyber attack and all our CPDs were blocked. And it was a, really a crisis situation because uh, the, the, the tower, the control tower doesn't work. Uh, we, we, we cannot manage any data and the port needs to be working. And uh, we used, um, so, uh, the, the human capacity and uh, all the learnings that we have from uh, the, uh, the ancient uh, times. So uh, we used uh, the radio and we used uh, the expertise of captains, of sailors, of, uh, of, of um, expert pilots, so and the port was working. So I would like to say that we cannot uh, rely everything in uh, artificial intelligence. It's, it's my, my opinion. Thank you, very insightful. Um, next question. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Alex Gillis from Port of Marseille. And I will ask you, uh, are we progressing towards gender equality? And do we need more women in executive positions? Well, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> I think that uh, we need more women, but uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, women here uh, learning as well uh, some of the knowledge that uh, maybe Several times ago, it was impossible that uh, women uh, uh, thought that uh, were uh, jobs for us, and of course, we need more, more women. Um, I think that it doesn't make sense that uh, in the uh, uh, 21st century, uh, we uh, still separate jobs for men and jobs for women. It, it doesn't take, take sense nowadays. Um, for me, um, uh, to be appointed as a president of the board, it was an opportunity because uh, I've been the, the only uh, woman president of Porto Barcelona. Uh, but I have the opportunity to promote more women in the board of the board, in the director's board. And uh, sometimes uh, it's not only to uh, get to, to the position of the presidency, the presidency, because if you get the position but don't, uh, doesn't happen uh, at surrounding uh, at the director's board or uh, to other levels of uh, the organization, nothing happens. So, and the important is that the women that can reach the position promote as well other women, women uh, of course, capable and uh, uh, with, with, uh, with, the, with the knowledge uh, and, and, and put these women and give the confidence to these women to develop also the position of leadership. Great, thank you and encouraging all women to continue their careers. <laughs> uh, we will continue with the next question. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Mohamed Ghanim. Uh, I'm coming from uh, uh, the Arab Academy in the Mita Port. 
so my question is, uh, what are some values or principles that guide your leadership style or decision-making process in your current and previous roles? Yeah. Well, uh, maybe uh, some the people that has worked with me can uh, answer better than me. But I, I think that when you get a position, you must be very humble. Uh, it means that you, know, you don't know everything. You have to learn from your team. And I have learned a lot from the team of the board. And you have to know very good your, what, what are your strengths and your skills. Because we, we are not good in everything. It's, it's impossible. Uh, well, I, I'm not good in everything. So if not, ask to my son and my daughters. And they can say that we are not good in everything. But I think that you have to be humble and uh, have humility uh, to say, OK, I, I, I know how to do this. And I don't know how to do that. And please, uh, we are a team, and let's going to do all together. Secondly, I think that I like to delegate. I, 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 I'm very confident with the team. And sometimes, Edouard said, but Marcel, tell me something about that. But I said, OK, it's, it's, it's great, because you, are, you thought about that. You, uh, you, know the project from the beginning to the end, and maybe uh, I'm only going to dedicate half an hour to this project. So I'm confident with my team, and it's, this is very important as well. And, and third of all, I, th I think that it's important to be honest with you, with yourself, and with your team, and also be a strong with the decision making. When a decision is made, you have to be strong to uh, support this decision. And well, I don't know if I have time, but I, 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 I'm, I think that maybe sometimes you are appointed to be a leader, a leadership in a leader position, but you have to win the authorities. And uh, the position doesn't mean that you have the authorities. You have the position. And you should win the authorities. And the authorities is given for the, the ones that are working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have um, yeah. <laughs> just one last yes, question. <laughs> Hello, it's Mar. I'm from Valencia, Valencia Port. So I would like to ask you if you have been, uh, what have been the biggest challenge you have faced as president yes. of the Port of Barcelona? Wow, uh, yes. Uh, for me, the biggest challenge, the first biggest challenge was talk uh, and, and, and uh, so take the team and put on the mindset of the team, the need, the need of electrification of the port. So when, when I began, I said, the port must be electrified in the next five, five six, seven years. And it was very difficult because the ports are, uh, and the boats, uh, are polluted, and uh, for me was the most important challenge to begin saying to the team, okay, we have to change this. We cannot be always uh, uh, listening that the port is a cause of pollution of the city. We have to change this, this claim and we are going to net zero port. And uh, if you can say, and in Valencia, I know that you are in the same, <laughs> in the same uh, path, uh, walking, uh, 
well, we have net zero port emissions, Grimaldi boats, and, and other initiatives that uh, are strategic if we uh, want uh, net zero emissions in 2030 as a city of Barcelona, but as a port. So it was uh, the best, uh, the, the main challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you.